Hello, in today's video we'll be replacing the rear brake shoes and brake drums on this 2005 Honda Civic. And to begin we'll start by loosening the lug nuts using a 19mm socket. All you want to do is loosen them about half a turn, just enough so the wheel doesn't spin when it's off the ground. Now we can use a jack to lift it from the pinch weld, just so the wheel's off the ground and you can put a jack stand to support it. And we can now completely remove the wheel. And this is our brake drum. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the parking brake is off. If not, the brake drum will not want to come off. Your brake drum should come off easily, as long as it's not stuck on the hub, or if the brake shoes and brake drums don't have grooves worn into them. But in case they don't, you can use bolts into these threaded holes to push the brake drum off the hub. With the brake drum off, We'll want to inspect the wheel cylinders for any signs of leaks or moisture that may indicate it's been leaking. If so, you will want to replace them because over time the leak will get worse and you will lose your brake fluid. And this is the reason I'm replacing the brake drums and the brake shoes. You may notice the cracks and grooves on the surface of the brake shoes. This is an indication of excessive heat from how glazed the surface of the brake drum is. Before taking apart the brakes, I like to clean them off with brake cleaner. This will spray off all that brake dust and it'll also clean the brake springs and the other components. You'll want to have something below to catch all that brake gunk that comes off. Now with everything dry and clean, we can begin removing this brake adjuster spring. It's probably easier to pull off the lower half of the spring, but I did it this way. Now let's remove the adjuster lever. Just lift up by the star wheel so the upper part is out of the way and then slide it off. To make removing the return spring easier, I like to adjust the adjuster screw all the way in with a screwdriver so you release as much tension as you can off of the spring. Let's now remove the return spring. What I do is I use a flat blade screwdriver to lift the spring up and away from the brake shoe so you have enough room to grab it with pliers or preferably vice grips like these. Once you lock them or have a good grip on the spring, you'll want to pull the spring towards the front so it unhooks from the hole and you can pull back the spring. We can go ahead and slide out the spring entirely. To get this adjuster out, You'll want to push back on one of the brake shoes and slide it out of the slots. And now just guide it out. Now to remove these hold down clips. For these you can use something like pliers to push down on the clips as you rotate them or rotate the pins behind them. Repeating the same for the other clip. You can also slide out the pins or leave them in place. To remove the brake shoes, this front one is easy at this point. Just slide it down and then hook it from the lower anchor spring, removing the other end from the brake shoe while you're at it. Now this other brake shoe will have the parking brake lever still attached. This parking brake lever is being held on by this horseshoe clip, and to remove it, first you'll want to open it up, and the way I do it is use a screwdriver to kind of pry it open between the two ends. And if you can get it to slide back to where there's a space to fit the screwdriver in between the pin and the clip, then at that point you can use a screwdriver to pry the clip off. If not, you can use pliers to grab the top of the pin, and the other end to grab the ends of the horseshoe clip, and this will push the clip back giving you more space behind the clip. You can also use a pick once you have space behind it, but I get kind of stubborn sometimes and I want to remove it with just a screwdriver. But whenever you're using a screwdriver, you want to push away from your hands so you don't slide off and cut yourself.
And there goes the flying horseshoe clip. And this is the clip I just removed. And there will also be a washer that will go underneath that clip. At this point, you can separate the brake shoe from the parking brake lever. I'll be replacing both the brake drums and the brake shoes, so you'll want to make sure to match the sizes to your old ones. Some models do have two different sizes. Now to clean and lubricate the adjuster screw assembly. We'll want to open it up by threading it completely out. First you'll want to clean off any gunk that it may have on the threads. This one's not too bad so I'll just wipe it down with a blue towel. Although if needed you can spray them down with brake cleaner. Now you'll want to put some anti seeds on the threads. You'll want to use just a little, this stuff gets everywhere. And as you thread on the other end, it'll get into the remaining threads. Now remove the top piece, clean it off, and add some anti seeds here as well. Now this piece is ready for install. Let's clean off the backing plate contact points, which will be six of them. I'm using a blue towel, but if it's really bad, you may want to use something a little rougher. Following that up by adding any seeds on the six contact points. Now for the brake shoes. You'll want to figure out if your brake shoes differ. Some will have a smaller brake surface and those will be pointed towards the front of the car. But these are all the same so it won't matter which one goes where. For this pin that holds the parking brake lever, some will have it pre-installed or included to install yourself. But this one didn't. So I just had to remove it off of the old ones. If they are a tighter fit than these, you can use a small hammer plus a pin punch to tap them out and back on. Now to install the first brake shoe onto the parking brake lever. You'll want the smooth side against the brake shoe like so. Next comes the washer. And then finally the horseshoe clip. You'll want the horseshoe clip to slide inside the pin's cutout section. And if you need to, you can squeeze it through using the pliers. And then once it's fully seated, you can use the pliers to clamp the ends together. And if they do curve up like this one, you can flatten them down with the pliers. We can install the small anchor spring next. Placing this brake shoe into position. Once it's in place, you can install a pin, followed by the hold down clip. Now compress the clip and rotate the pin to hold it in place. Now let's install the other brake shoe. First hooking it onto the small spring and then placing it into position. Now inserting the pin through the back and then the hold down clip. Compress it and rotate the pin so it sits in the groove. You'll want to get the adjuster screw assembly on next, and you'll want the notches and the slots to go in just the way that you see them here. Once you get one side on, you'll want to push back the other brake shoe to give you enough room to get the other side in. Now you can compress both brake shoes to hold it in place for now. Slide the rear part of the return spring into its slot. Okay. 
Now using the pliers, you'll want to grab the front part of the spring, pull it, and then guide it into its hole. Once you got the spring in place, you can release the pliers. To install the adjuster lever, it's just the opposite of the removal. Slide it into its hole and then tilt it down towards the star wheel. It'll be all the way in once it tucks in behind the notch of the adjuster screw assembly. Now finally the adjuster spring. You'll want to get the top part of the spring on first and then using the pliers pull it into its hole. And this is what your brake should look like fully assembled. Now let's remove the rust protective coating on the brake drums using brake cleaner, followed by a wipe down with a blue towel. When you install your brake drum, you should notice that it'll fit loose and that'll be because the adjuster is set all the way down. So to correct this, you'll want to adjust the screw outward so the brake shoes drag very lightly on the drum. And you may notice that I'm turning the screw counterclockwise and this is pushing the brake shoes very slowly outward. And if you notice that the brake drum is a little hard to get on, then most likely you adjusted it too far out. And it's definitely noticeable that it's on there too tight. I even have to use a screwdriver to get it off. Now to adjust the screw back in, You'll want to use something to pull back on the adjuster lever as you rotate the star wheel. This is a self-adjusting brake system, so as you pull the parking brake lever and as you drive in reverse, the mechanism slowly removes any play in the setup to compensate for brake wear, so all we're trying to do here is get it close. You can also tap the lever back every time you rotate it, but if you try turning it without pulling the lever back, the lever should lock the gear just like this. Now if you adjust them properly, this is what a little bit of drag on the brake drum should feel like. You can also tell by your brake pedal. If you feel that the pedal travels lower than usual, it means that they have to be adjusted tighter. And if you feel that the car doesn't want to move, it drags, or the brake pedal feels high, then they're most likely too tight. Now all you gotta do is tighten and torque the wheels to spec. Well I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.